What's up guys, my name is Luke and welcome back to Motion and Design. So for this week's tutorial, I thought I would continue the procedural geometry that I've been doing and then show you some X particles growth. I saw some Houdini render that had like a similar growth effect, so I wanted to see if I could figure out kind of a way to get a similar effect. It's not the same as what you'd get from Houdini, but I still thought it was a pretty cool effect. So yeah, let's jump straight into it. Cool, so let's start over here with a cube and let's make it a hundred by hundred by hundred. Then let's duplicate that cube, hide the first one, and then let's go over here and add in an atom array. Throw the one cube into it and then let's just make it maybe five by five, just so it stays like that. Uh, actually, yeah, five by five should be fine. Cool. Then let's throw this into a cloner. Drop these in over here. Turn to grid. I guess we can make it three by three. That's fine. Something like that should be good. Cool. Let's go over here into our cloner. Go into MoGraph and choose random. And the parameters. Let's change this to like 100 by 100 by 100. And let's also change the scale uniformly, maybe by like 0.3, just so that there's some variations over here. Let's go over here, and then just kind of change the seed until you get something you kind of like. I think that's pretty cool. I think, yeah, I think that's quite nice. That should work for now. We can add a little bit more clones if we want to. So like that should be pretty cool. Yeah, I think that looks good. Then let's go over here, let's add a volume boulder and a volume measure. Let's throw the boulder into the measure, and let's throw the clone into the boulder over here, and we can change why let's have, uh, turn off the random then let's change the boulder over here the voxel size to maybe around like five for now maybe three just so we can see it better nice so the nice way about doing it this way is that we can change this all i mean this entire process is very procedural cool so in our volume mesh over here let's add a vertex map cool and make sure there's nothing in it and then let's add a spherical field and so now what we're going to do is we're going to place spherical fields all around this object, just in random places. Cool, and once you have a bunch of them scattered around, something that you're happy with, let's go back into our uh, vertex map over here, and then let's add a freeze. Drag that to the bottom, and then make sure that all the spherical fields are set to max. In our freeze over here, let's change the mode to grow. Let's change it to 10 should be fine. Let's maybe make this 20 effect strength and let's see how much that grows by. Maybe a little bit less, maybe 10. I think something like that works. Cool, so I'm gonna stick with 10 for now. Nice. Let's just take all our spherical fields and then just throw them in the group just so it's a little bit more organized. Cool, then let's add a X particle system over here. We're gonna change the emitted type from rectangle to object and then throw in our volume measure. We're also gonna throw in our vertex map into the selection. So now if we had to press play, it should only be coming from those specific points. Awesome. While we're in the emitter over here, let's change our speed to zero and then go to our display over here, change it to gradient parameter and change it from squares to spheres so we can see. Perfect. Uh, I think for now we can leave it at age. Uh, we can change it just now. But yeah, we should be getting a similar effect like this where it's slowly growing on. Let's go over here and add in a XP scale modifier. Scale. Let's maybe change this to 0.1, go over here into the mapping, add one, and we're going to change this to radius change. So I don't want it to be too drastic, so let's bring that down like that, and let's see what that looks like. Uh, are we getting a slight bit of growth? We are, but not enough. Let's change this to about 0.2. Why is it not changing? Radius change, maybe if we change this to 30. Well, that's 
do nothing. Seems that way. Let's throw it over here into our modifiers. Maybe that will solve the problem. Uh, let's also change the radius to one because we want it to start small and then grow big if it decides to work with me. Uh, let's also change the emitter emit from polygon center to polygon area so that we don't get this kind of um, I don't know where it looks like it's uniform. We don't really want that look. So like that looks a little bit better. Okay, so they are scaling up. Awesome. Okay, cool. That is perfect over there. Let's go over here into our dynamics and let's add a fluid FX. Let's go and also add a XP collision modifier, or oh, sorry, not modifier, dynamics over here, and turn the bump down and then turn the friction all the way up. Let's also select this connect on collision. We also want to turn up the amount of emission over here, so maybe let's make this about 2000 for now. I think in the final render I had it around 5000, but for now, so that we can actually see what we're doing in the viewport, I'm going to keep it around 2000. And now you'll see when it's growing, it's moving away from each other, which is not what we want. If we increase this to maybe 20, what's happening? Hmm. Let's add a um, XP collider onto our geometry over here. Turn the bounce all the way down and the friction all the way up. Maybe that will and connect on collision. Let's see if that helps us over here so that they don't go flying off. They still go flying off, but it is giving us a better effect where it's actually growing and connecting, which is the look that we want. By turning up the amount of particles, it seems like that's helped because now that there's more particles spawning, they're able to connect and not fly off. And yeah, now we have this really cool growth effect that's like slowly growing over the system over here. So I thought this looked really cool. And as it grows, kind of bulges outwards and has this really weird, like kind of organic effect to it. So yeah, I'm not going to show how I did the lighting because that just it just took some time. It was mainly just blocking out certain scene, certain parts over here and just using some lights. And the texturing was quite simple. I can do the basic texturing over here. Uh, for the particles, let's go over here into our emitter, add a octane object tag, change it to geometry. Let's add in a sphere over here, and then throw a sphere into here. Let's change the radius to about one centimeter. Don't crash on me, Octane. And while we're waiting for that to load, we can add a diffuse material. Let's add the diffuse onto our sphere over here. And we want to grab a instance color. Cool, throw that into particle and then put our emitter into it. So I threw it into the transmission channel, turned the diffuse all the way down. This is how we get this kind of like subsurface scattering look that we want with it. So if we press play now, it's growing. So if it's just black for you, the reason that that's happening is because we need to change our mode over here to path tracing so that light can actually go through it. So depending on the look that you're going for, you can always just throw it into the diffuse, but I wanted it to kind of have this kind of uh, subsurface scattering type of look to it. So I threw it into the transmission. I also added a, I think it was a texture emission over here brought down the brightness quite a lot. I think it was only at like one or something like that. And then made the instance color, the texture over here. So that in the scene, cause it was quite a dark scene, I wanted it that it actually illuminated each of these little particles that were forming over here. And yeah, and then with some proper lighting, let me just throw in a random HDRI, just so we can, ooh, I mean, actually, if it's just black, that actually looks 
pretty cool. Because it's procedural, we can very easily just swap out our clone over here with some more stuff. We can make the cube bigger, we could add in some different shapes, and you can get a variety of different options. And with it being vertex map, you could just throw in different things. The only thing you would have to change is the freeze over here. Because the way that the freeze works is that when you add the freeze, you see where all these vertex maps are sitting, they're gonna just freeze like that. If I had to like remove all these spherical fields, the freeze will just kind of keep this here. So if you do change around the spherical fields and it's not doing anything, just delete the freeze and reload it up and that should work. Uh, yeah, you could normally click this auto update over here, but because we're on this grow mode, actually, I guess you could just change it to none, click on auto update and then go back to grow and then you should get that uh, effect. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It's a nice quick one, but I thought it was a pretty cool effect and you can get some really, I don't know, cool renders out of this. This project file is up on my Patreon, not this exact one, but the one that I had in my render with all the lighting, texturing, and yeah. So yeah, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please consider giving it a like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Peace.